Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to your favorite channel, PSTM. In this episode, let us talk about like how to structure a manuscript according to the Elsevier format. The present uh, episode is derived from Elsevier Research Academy, which was presented by Angel Borja. So. Every manuscript is having a structure which provides a detailed information. So let us see what are the structures of a manuscript. A title, abstract, introduction, methods, results, discussion, conclusion coupled with figures, tables and references. The title must be short and informative. The abstract should have at least one paragraph. The introduction must contain one or two pages with uh, recent uh, references cited. Methods should be two or three pages which should provide a clear methodological or protocol what you have followed. The results should be six to eight pages. Discussion must be four to six pages. Conclusion one paragraph but it should not repeat the abstract figures depending upon your results tables once again depending upon your results and optimal references should be 20 or less than 50 so moving on to one by one in this episode we are providing uh, information according to IMRAD format which means I for introduction, M for methods, R for results and D for discussion which is followed by conclusion, acknowledgement and references and supporting materials or supporting data if you have. So moving on to one by one, title, title must be very clear and informative and it should explain the purpose of your study and it is your first impression which attracts the readers attention as well as editor and uh, reviewers referees attention so the first impression is the last impression and it should be very powerful in recent times we are flooded with different amounts of publication related to your field or, or other fields readers don't have time to read a scient complete scientific uh, article but you should attract your manuscript by selecting a good and informative title so moving on to the keywords keywords are used for indexing your paper it's like labeling your manuscript so in these keywords you need to avoid words which has a broader meaning or words which are already included in your title. You need to provide like five, 3 to 5 words depending upon your author's journal's author guidelines. So moving on to the abstract which is an important component of your manuscript. The abstract tells prospective readers what you did and what the important findings in your research together with a title it is like advertising your article among the scientific community so it should be accurate used words that convey precise meaning of your research the abstract provides a shorter description of your research manuscript and the purpose of your paper it gives a key results but minimizes experimental data where you avoid or minimize the experimental data which is very important by highlighting your results every abstract should have a last sentence with the conclusion a clear abstract will strongly influence whether or not your work is considered at the editorial processing so moving on to the introduction this is your opportunity to convince readers that you clearly know why 
work is useful, why you have conducted your research, etc. A good introduction should have the following components. What is the problem to be solved? Are there any existing solutions by referring the other reported uh, studies? Which is the best till date according to you? And what is the limitations till date even though there are lots of research studies carried out? And what your research is providing a hope to achieve in this paper? So moving on to the methods, this section provides like how the problem was studied, how it was solved, what are the methods you followed. Every time if you are following an established method then you need to use the appropriate uh, references whichever method you are following. According to the editorial process and review process, reviewers will criticize incomplete or incorrect method description which may lead to a rejection. So this section is very critical. So please be careful while you are writing your protocols or methodology. Moving on to the results, this section responds to the question what have you found? You need to present all your results or part of your results according to your manuscript. Remember that most journals offer the possibility of adding supporting material. So you can easily add the supporting data which you think which can act as a secondary uh, like support or importance. In this way, do not attempt to hide data in the hope of saying it for later paper or you are trying to provide an inappropriate results feeling that that the other part of the results you can easily communicate in the form of a second article so please avoid such things which results in like loss of evidence for your conclusion always use subheadings to keep your results like more clear and informative Moving on to the discussion part, here you must respond to what results you have gained, what does it mean. It is probably the easiest section to write but the hardest section to get right. So here you get a chance to sell your data and convince the reviewer or a reader how good is your man like your research paper compared to the previous findings. So you need to justify if your results have a particular, uh, if your research paper has a particular result then you need to justify that uh, this findings is in accordance to the report of XYZ at all. According to the editorial board, lots of manuscripts get rejected even though they have a significant findings due to the poor or weak discussion component. So you need to take discussion part as an important criteria for your manuscript to get accepted. You need to make the dis discussion corresponding to the results of your, like your colleagues or the results which are already reported in your research area. So what are the things you need to avoid? Avoid statements that go beyond what the results you are trying to support. Avoid unspecific expressions such as higher temperature, at a lower rate, significant, highly significant, etc. Avoid sudden introduction of new terms or new ideas in your introduction, sorry, in your discussion. Avoid speculation on possible interpretations which are like which allowing po avoid possible like speculation on possible interpretations are allowed but these should be rooted in the fact which means like you need to 
provide a speculation on the possible interpretation based on the facts rather than imagination to achieve good interpretation you need to have a concrete uh, results going on to the last component of your manuscript conclusion this section shows how the work advances the field from the present state of knowledge there are so many research articles available on the research what you are doing how it stands out of the crowd you need to highlight that the conclusion section is important for reviewers readers and you need to be very precise and very clear with your conclusion a common error in this section is repeating the abstract again you need to avoid the repeating of abstract so you should provide a clear just scientific justification for your work in this section so moving on to the acknowledgement you need to thank people or laboratory or universities which have helped you to design this experiment or conduct this experiment you need to thank your funding agency by providing a clear grant number etc references should be followed according to the authors guidelines mentioned in the respective journals so guys thank you so much for watching if you are new to this channel please do hit the subscribe button and stay connected for the upcoming videos let us upgrade our scientific knowledge during this lockdown process wish you a happy and safe day good luck